Hey there again. Uh, in the last video we looked at beta weighting our delta. So taking uh, an option position that has a given delta and then basically recasting those deltas in, in the terms of some sort of index like the S&P 500. And the advantage of that is we can put all sorts of different underlyings basically onto the same footing. Basically giving us an apples to apples comparison and giving us a better way to judge the uh, the, the size of our port portfolio, de determine what type of position we actually have on when we have complicated option spreads and different underlines. But there is a caveat to that, and that is the issue of correlation. Uh, your computer can spit out a number for the beta coefficient, but how meaningful is that number in reality? I'm not going to go into too much detail on the statistics of correlation. I'm just going to show basically how to calculate it and give you a kind of hand-waving interpretation of what it means in the context of a linear regression. I'm going to do this uh, at first the same way we've done in past videos. I know we pulled in the data for, into Panda's uh, data frames and then pulled it on the NumPy vectors and, and did, did that. And that's the approach we're going to take. Um, more for the sake of uh, continuity with what we've done before and that is generally my workflow uh, for various various reasons but I want to add to it a little bit and after after the fact what I'm going to do is just kind of repeat the process in pandas and show that you could do it all quickly um, just from within pandas and then maybe just do a kind of a pretty visualization of the results at, results afterwards so that's enough of a preamble let's just jump right into it Okay, notebook time. Um, for our imports, we're just going to use the basis that we always do, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. Uh, we're also going to pull in the linear regression, um, linear regression function from SciPy Stats. And uh, later on, we will probably make use of the Seaborn uh, package, which, which, is a, which does fancy plotting in order to do like a heat map of, the, of a correlation matrix. So let's run that, and now let's pull in our data. So here's our imports. Let's just see if they run. Okay, we're going to look at a bunch of underlines here. The spiders, SPY, we're going to use this as our index. Uh, we could just have easily used SPX, but I went with SPY because I trade it a lot more often. Uh, TLT, which is 20-year bonds. GLD, which is gold. XRX, which is Xerox Corporation, which surprisingly still exists. I just wanted something that um, I don't think I've ever traded Xerox, but uh, it was a big, uh, big uh, employer in the city I grew up in, so I just decided to add it. Uh, FXB is the British pound, it's the ETF that, that tracks the British pound, and AAPL or Apple, everyone knows Apple. And uh, I pulled these in, in, pulled these in as pandas data frames, and I already took the uh, percent change. Uh, column. We've done this before, so I just didn't want to, to waste time repeating it. So, okay. Let us pull out uh, the data we need into NumPy vectors. So we're just pulling out the uh, percent change column as into individual NumPy vectors, and we're also deleting the first element of that array since that's a not a number. And this function here from uh, SciPy stats, the linear regression function, cannot uh, handle the not a number. So let's just see if this cell runs. Excellent. Okay, so I put in headers here for all our all of our underlines. Um, I'm going to do these pretty quickly since we've already done this before, but I'm going to pay attention to uh, some of the additional information that's returned by our linear regression function here. So let's come down here and uh, work out TLT. So let's plot the TLT data. So right away you can see this is a little bit different than what we've done in past videos where there was a clear upward slope here. This, um, if anything, there's a negative slope and it's a lot more blob-like than in um, than data we've seen in the past. So let's do the linear regression now. Um, so we call our linear regression function on our data. It returns a whole bunch of things which, which we've seen before. And we've discussed the slope and the intercept, but we have not discussed the R value. And I think... Um, in this video, we're going to focus a little bit more on that. So let's calculate the regression and just plot the line to see what it looks like. So there we go. Uh, it's a negative slope line, and it's relatively shallow. Let's print out the, um, the slope, which would be the beta coefficient. So let's go print uh, beta is equal to slope. So you see we have a negative beta here, uh, negative 0.3. So before saying anything more about this, let's look at gold. Let's just grab all this code up here, um, come down to gold, insert a cell below, paste it in, and change uh, TLT to GLD, um, GLD, and 
GLD. So let's run that. Huh. This looks even more amorphous and blob-like. And again, it has a fairly small beta. So the question you might ask for these, especially gold, and maybe to a certain extent TLT, is how well does our model, how well does our assumption of a linear relationship uh, actually reflect the data? And that's where that co coefficient coefficient, I'm, I'm sorry, correlation coefficient comes in. So let's just print out uh, that coefficient, which is the R value here. So let's go down and print, print, oh my God, print, core is equal to our value. Let's run it. So you see it's a, it's a, it's a modestly sized negative number. So this is going to range between potentially negative one to one. Um, with negative one mean it's perfectly inversely correlated, so it's a perfectly negatively sloped line. Our, our raw data is a perfectly negative, negatively sloped line. Likewise, for a plus one coefficient, it's a positively sloped line. Um, with zero being there's no, no linear relationship whatsoever. So we're kind of in the middle of the range. This is moderately negatively correlated. So let's grab this and see what it looks like for gold. Where am I? Come down here, paste it in, run that cell. Okay, you can see here that there's basically no correlation between gold and the S&P 500. This number here is pretty close to zero. It's slightly negative, but I wouldn't really read that much into it. Um, so I would say that th there's no relationship between gold and the S&Ps. Okay, GLD, uh, next on the list, XRX, Xerox. Uh, insert below. Paste in the commands. Interesting. This kind of surprises me. Um, let's print out. Actually, let's, let's copy and paste these uh, beta and correlation values. Let's see. Paste. It kind of surprises me. I did not expect there to be this much of a correlation, a relatively modest cor correlation, moderately strong correlation between Xerox and the S&P 500, and the beta is actually greater than one, which again surprises me. I mean, I don't really follow the stock that much, but I would have thought that it hasn't really moved that much over the past five years, which is when these data were, were uh, taken from. Uh, British Pound. So, insert uh, below. Paste. Interesting. Another one that without uh, apparently without much of a correlation. Let us um, copy and paste these in here. So very small positive beta, but uh, relatively weak correlation. So not much of a relationship between the pound and the S and P five hundred. Apple. Um, let's paste an apple. Let's just copy this to print out the values. So again, a fairly strong linear relationship, almost uh, 0 0.75, 0 0.76 uh, correlation coefficient and a 1.1 something, 1.17 ish uh, beta. So again, fairly strong linear relationship and um, little more volatility, little more volatility than the S&Ps. So, as I said earlier, this can be done uh, entirely from within pandas. Within pandas. So, just quickly here, I want to uh, just show how to do that. Maybe make a note or a comment or two about doing the same thing in NumPy. So, we're going to create a data frame built on our uh, percent change uh, columns from our from our raw data matrix, or raw, raw data panda frame. So, that's that. Um, and then it's just calling the correlation function on this frame, which will um, return a, another data frame. So what I'm going to do is come down here and just go core, I'll call it core frame is equal to PCT frame dot correlation. And let's just print that out here, um, core frame. There you go, and you see the numbers are the same. Um, you get back a matrix, it's symmetric. You notice that the 
Uh, diagonal is all ones. That should be self-explanatory. Everything is perfectly correlated to itself. Spy to spy, um, TLT to TLT. And like, for example, this TLT number 0.43, if we go up here, where is our TLT? XRX, GLD, TLT, 0.43. So we get the same, same thing. And let's just do a quick visualization of this matrix using a uh, heat map from uh, Seaborn. Okay, edit from the future here. Something went wrong with the recording and I never cop captured the part where we actually built this plot. So the command is just simply a uh, Seaborn heat map, obviously, it generates a heat map. Uh, we just pass in our matrix and I also passed in a, um, an additional argument just to give it some sort of a color scheme. So, uh, okay, back to the actual video. And this is useful, obviously, just for seeing your entire portfolio at a glance. You can kind of see the correlations between everything. Uh, lastly, just to tie a bow on everything, I want to just do it quickly from within NumPy. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. The only uh, oddity is that NumPy, when you build your NumPy matrix, it wants each data set as a row vector. So what I'm going to do here is basically just reshape all these um, all these into row vectors. So one row and then whatever number of columns there are. So I'm going to do that. And now we just call, um, NumPy has a built-in correlation function. We just call, call that. So I'm going to come up back here and stack all these, uh, all these vectors, all these row vectors into a matrix. And then I'm just going to call, um, call it correlation matrix. And that's going to be equal to the, this function core coef, cor correlation coefficient called on that, uh, on that matrix. And let's just print that out. Print core matrix. Uh, what's wrong? Oh, uh, here it is. That looked good. So you see we get the same thing essentially as the pandas data frame. It's a symmetric square matrix. And we can also pass this to, um, to Seaborn and kind of generate another heat map. So we'll just do the same thing here. I haven't bothered to put in uh, names for these, these values here, but you, you can see that the, the, uh, the actual heat map is the same as for pandas. Yeah, so pretty simple, easy to calculate. Um, and unlike some of the things we've done, which are more theoretical abstractions, things that are nice to know, but they're not going to really make you any, any money trading, this is surprisingly useful. Um, people, I've had people say to me things like, you know, I have a very diversified portfolio. I have, um, I have some tech stocks. I have Apple. I have Facebook. I have uh, oil. I have Exxon. I have uh, Chevron, I have some biotech in like uh, Pfizer or Amgen or whatever. So I have a really diversified portfolio. And I'm thinking to myself, what you have is a portfolio that is basically the S&P 500. If you looked at the correlation between those underlines in the S&P, they'd be very, very strong. So you really do not have a diversified portfolio on. So uh, trading platforms nowadays are starting to add in correlation. I know Tastyworks does. I'm not really sure about Thinkorswim or Interactive Brokers. I haven't used those in, in several years. Uh, last time I checked, they did not. But um, you can easily download data from Yahoo Finance and just run through these quick calculations. They're, I mean, you've seen how easy they are to do. And just looking at these, you can see a couple of relatively non-correlated underlines. Uh, obviously, bonds has a slight inverse correlation, uh, gold as of this point at least for the last five years has has no correlation so yeah I mean you could, it's an easy thing to work out and uh, again it's surprisingly useful yeah that's all I've got for today so um, cool until next time see ya